It's really bad, isn't it? Another bad loss, but even worse, John Gibson could be out for a while. We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade. Still a little bit hoarse, a little bit of a raspy voice, but we're going to get through this today. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Don't forget, this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, etc., etc. You can follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD and the show's Twitter's at LO underscore Ducks. Oh, what what a day. Actually, what a, what a weekend for me personally. Um, having to work multiple hockey games. having My voice was starting to get better Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then just to not go into it too much, but there was a game that I had to work Sunday. And needless to say, I needed to talk a little louder than I would normally like. And my voice just kind of like, popped a little bit so I'm going to keep this segment short mainly because I don't want to cough in front of the camera and also because I'm planning on having Erica Ayala come on and just kind of jump in for a segment or two hopefully a couple segments and try to break down this game as much as we can yeah it it was bad for multiple reasons I mean there was some good there was some good out of this game. And that was that the Anaheim Ducks scored three power play goals. Which means they are no longer 32nd in the league in power play. They've jumped all the way up to 31st. Yippee. So they're second to last now instead of last. Penalty killing, still an issue. Still a big, big issue. They gave up yet another power play goal. It was it was a bad one, and then giving up the late goal to Daniel Sprong and Sprong doing the whole ear thing at the very end. I mean that that was crap. I did get home to watch that second period, got to see that top line in the power play do its magic, and actually that top line has been really good. But that's pretty much all that's been good with the Ducks: Henrik, Zegris, Terry. That's been the lone bright spot for the Ducks. And that's about it. And then there's John Gibson. Gibby, who has had a couple of very good games, but he has struggled a bit this season. And now he might be out. We still are not going to know the status of John Gibson for a while. That's assuming that we have a game on Tuesday night. We, I mean, we probably will, but I'm actually hoping not. Just to give myself a bit of a break. But, yeah, just to kind of break down that particular play exactly. Daniel Sprong goes in deep, goes to or towards John Gibson's right side, scores it in close. Gibson tries to make a sprawling save. And in that sprawling save, it kind of looked like he kind of like sprawled a certain way. Maybe he contorted his body in a way that was not natural to him. And what wound up happening was he got hurt. John Gibson left the game immediately after giving up that fifth goal. And in comes Anthony Stolarz. So now the big question, what do the Ducks do about John Gibson? If he's hurt that bad, it might be prudent to leave him out as long as possible, give Anthony Stolarz the keys right now. See what he can do. And this would be the time, and I've said this even preseason, Lukas Dostal is ready, and he should get a chance just in case something happens. Well, that something has happened. Now, again, we, I cannot stress this enough. We don't know how long Gibby's going to be out. But Dostal is more than ready to take on that backup role. 
And it appears he might have to, especially if the Ducks do indeed play this next game at Nashville. So we'll, we'll know more tomorrow. All right. Just one other thing. Gibby, right now, his expected goals is down this season compared to last season. The defense has been nowhere close to good. When you lose Hampus Lindholm, when you lose Josh Manson, when you lose even Kevin Shattenkirk for a brief time, and now when you lose Jamie Drysdale, you realize how thin the Ducks are defensively. They're, they're just very thin. And even losing John Klingberg, that kind of hurts too. The blue line needs to get shored up big time. Big time. Now, I know the Ducks have a couple of defensemen, young defensemen, on the pipeline, including one of my favorite guys, Olin Zellweger, who is currently playing in juniors. Uh, help is on the way. But I even said this game one. Have patience. Have patience with this team. Although I think patience is running out on Dallas Eakins. And I'm hoping to talk with Erica more about that. All right. We're going to head into the first intermission. And I'll be joined by Erica Ayala. Hopefully in the next minute or two. But first, let's talk about Bet Online, which is the one place that has you covered and the one place that we trust. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. You can check out the NBA, the NFL, obviously the National Hockey League. You have futures lines. You also have boxing, MMA, among other sports, horse racing as well. So, if you want to check out Bet Online, you could do so either using your mobile device or your laptop. Once again, Bet Online is where the game starts, and Bet Online is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please gamble responsibly. So, uh, yeah, pretty uh, important, I'll say, win for the Seattle Kraken in, in Anaheim. It wasn't pretty. We took the lead early, but couldn't hang on to it. And we had to show some resiliency against this Anaheim Ducks team. But we do get the, the win. Thanks, Jeff, for, for coming through. Um, yeah, it wasn't my favorite second period that I've seen from the Seattle Kraken. I thought there were blips in the first period where we saw the, the consistency diminish. As if when we got those first two in, we were a little content to coast. And then that picked up in a big way, unfortunately, for us in the second period. And you started to see Anaheim come back. Um, but thank goodness for Sprung, we said in our playback chat. For, former Duck. Former Duck. It's always it's always a former <laughs> player, right? Yep. And Sprung, again, we get him in, uh, you know, at the trade deadline last year. He comes back as a PTO yeah. And makes the roster as a PTO and came up big for the Seattle Kraken. So happy about that. Happy about the resiliency. Martin Jones back in net. Not happy to see Morgan Geeky out with an upper body. Did not return. Mm -hmm. Jamie Alexiak that we just got back from injury went what looked like kind of a knee-to-knee -knee situation. He did return to the game, so hoping all is well there. So I'm glad that we got the win. Not thrilled about some of the play. Yeah, on the duck side, I mean, not happy to see John Gibson go out like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gibby, we don't know his status as of right now. And hoping for the best on Gibby. On, We'll see if the Ducks do play a game on Tuesday. I mean, we still don't know if they're going to play that day. Wait, what's happening? Why wouldn't you uh, play? Remember, Nashville still has water. Oh, right. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, the next event would be Ducks-Nashville. And I've been like kind of keeping an eye on that there's still no official status or no official word on if that wow. game's gonna happen because of all that stuff with the wow. water they I had to cancel their I... last two games wow i didn't realize that was still ongoing if i'm yeah. being honest so wow we'll see we'll see, we'll see you by tomorrow i guess 
But. We'll see. We'll see. Well, you know, yeah. Um, getting this win in the Pacific was important for us. Yeah, it Seattle was. cracking on a tear back. Um, you uh, know what I was having... impressed with the most? Go for it. There what? was a, there was a couple of guys that I really like. Uh, McCann is one of the most fluid players that I've seen on the other side. Mm. Like good good lord, I I love his skating for the Kraken side. I mean, how has he looked to you this season? I I think McCann is great. He's been great for us. We talked about it on the podcast before. He was the first player that we gave an extended contract coming out of, of course, the um, expansion draft. And I think we can see why he's been such an important piece, especially early, super early on in this season when not everything was quite clicking. And he's found a way to keep that and maintain that consistency, be a part of of this offense and um i like it i like it from him i like it for us yeah i would hope so and was there a duck or two that you were very impressed with on this on this game um to be honest i i don't i wasn't focused very much on them because i was very much laser focused on some things that we were not doing correctly but, um, you know, McTavish, we talked about that McTavish goal. I also liked just that he almost felt like there was like a a, a release. <laughs> he was like, yeah, we got one. We got one on here. And I like that. I like that yep, kind of player. Yeah, we're who's watching the replay right now. Fired up. Like, first there off, that was, a, that was a perfect Royal Road pass to McTavish. Yep, we talked about it. I mean, my God, Z- uh, Zegris to McTavish. Mm, chef's kiss. So that and, was great. And then, of course, uh, the one that tied it. <laughs> our broadcast yeah, also um, talked t- about Troy Terry. Terry. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yep, exactly. Um, um, Troy, Troy Terry the is a cracking killer. <laughs> I've been saying this all season, and I'm going to continue to say it. I think Troy Terry is a legit star. And I'm going to say mm. this on your side, but I'm going to say it overall. I think Troy Terry could be a 90 to 100 point guy eventually i think terry get 90 this season how often do you see 90 point seasons from the west coast not that yeah okay he's he's averaging more than a point a game right now hey hey love to see it i'm just saying i mean not when he's playing against us (laughs) yeah well 20 23 points in 22 games right now averaging over a point I've I've been harping on Troy Terry's aggressiveness. He's finally mm-hmm. getting to the puck more. He's worked on his speed a little bit and just picking his spots better, both on the shot and both on the rush. Because I had a couple of rush goals this season as well where he winds up on a two-on-one or a breakaway or a three-on-two, and he picks that perfect spot. So that's where I'm going to say that Troy Terry... 90, 90 point score this season. I'm going to call it still. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we would love that for you. Don't want to see it against the Kraken. And we're, it, we're still in the playback room. So we're getting some comments about Andre Burakovsky. He's another player who this season has really steadied the offense. We've had contributions. I mean, we had a seven, uh, we had an eight goal game. We're, we had seven different scores. It was, I believe, that was uh, Schwartzy that doubled up. But so we're getting contributions throughout the offense, even on the defensive side, defenders scoring for us. That being said, McCann, Burakovsky, there was a time where I talked a lot about Yanni Gord and Brandon Tanev mm-hmm. because of the impact they were making in our first five game win streak. So um, that's good to see. We did not see that last season. I don't think I'm having so much trouble trying to think of what else I want to talk about as far as this Ducks team, except I'm just going to keep coming back to it. And you know, where I'm going with this. They're in last place. Remember last season when I had my little um, tweet thread about Dallas Eakins? No. Um, how he only has so few games to go. 
because mm. I thought he was going to get let go or fired. I really legit thought mm. that. I'm sure the Seattle broadcast talked about Dallas Eakins at least for a few seconds because this is his fourth season. Where's the results? There are none. Mm. I know the fans are just clamoring for him to be gone. They're waiting. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think they talked about him too much. That being said, <laughs> that's that's tough. Uh, when, when you're in a division, the Pacific Division, again, I knew enough to know that the Seattle Kraken were going to have to strike as early as possible if we wanted to be successful in getting to the playoffs, and you have to be successful in your division to do that. The Pacific Division, of course, has a history in the last handful of years, uh, more than a handful, um, you know, of, of really being a struggling division. Yeah. That being said, you're starting to see teams turn it around. I mean, Vegas obviously is a, is an outlier in a lot of ways. That being said, really drew more attention to the division. Yeah. And so now that eyes are focused um, and, you know, all that comes with that, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, what does that mean for a bench boss as far as how they're able to produce in the Pacific division in particular. He is going to have to be the fall guy in all of this with good mm. reason. Uh, Dallas Eakins had very little to no success with Edmonton about a decade ago. Um, I still think back to two years ago when Trevor Zegers first came up and I feel like his development was being stunted when Zegers was mm. getting benched numerous times in 2020 mm -hmm. and even dating back to last season the first maybe month or so Zegris was still getting benched and still getting healthy scratched which i still mm. think did not help him as far as calder votes last season it did not this season he's finally got the full reins but it's come at a cost mctavish he's had a couple of games where he's gotten like seven or eight minutes total ice time which is really not good and not what you want for a future star of your team, a future guy that you want to have as your 2C eventually. And there's been times where McTavish has been fourth, fourth line. Yeah, we definitely in Seattle know nothing about that conversation. So I can't really... Of course, I am being uh, sarcastic because <laughs> I feel like I've talked about nothing but Shane Wright this year, even when he is not actively on the Seattle Kraken roster as of uh, as he is right now. He's in the AHL playing with Coachella Valley. I mean, I'll be seeing and him so, soon. So uh, there you go. Well, you know, keep us posted. We might be seeing him soon. When Morgan Geeky goes out, and uh, you know, if he's out indefinitely. Then now there's finally space. Then they'd for better Shane bring Wright him back at the centerman position. So they they'd better bring we'll him see. back soon. We'll see what happens. Honestly, I don't. Listen, I'm not here to argue that Shane Wright needs more minutes with the Seattle Kraken. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just not going to do that. I understand that young players need to be developed, but this is a young team. This is a building franchise. And there were things that the franchise needs to focus on that were bigger than just Shane Wright. Right. And, you know, his, 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 you know, adoring fans but on freaking social media. To bring it back to the Ducks, he picked apart the San Diego goals last night. He picked them apart on both ends of the ice. He's too good for the AHL right now. He's not good enough for the Seattle Kraken roster. Ugh, so he's in limbo then. Apparently. I'm not telling you apparently. I'm telling you when he was in our lineup, he didn't do any of that. So, Oh, you know who else is in that same limbo right now? Quentin Byfield. I was looking at the rain. Yeah, Quentin Byfield. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, and he, he's a what? Second overall? Second overall pick. A few years ago. There you go. But I, I do there think, I think Wright's going to turn it around. 
I do too. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to argue that he needs to be on the Seattle Kraken roster right now. I'm not going to do it. You won't hear me do it. You won't hear it on C- on Locked on Kraken because that's not where I think he needs to be. That being said, give the kid time. Do I yeah. think this stint in the AHL is good for him? Yes. It's building his confidence, obviously. But without... <laughs> if you were seeing what we were seeing in Seattle without this AHL stint, I don't think you would be arguing that he needs to be in the Seattle Kraken r- lineup. Who is he going to replace? Literally, Morgan Geeky uh, has he's... been having – he's on a tear. You're not taking Morgan Geeky out. Wenberg is our top – he's playing for the most – for all intents and purposes, he's the top-line center right now. Yeah. Matty Beniers, don't touch him. Who who is Shane Wright coming in for? Who's he replacing? You can't replace Daniel Sprong right now because he just had a fantastic game against his former team. Correct. You can't do that. You can't. And you can't replace Oliver that, Brookstrand right now. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Who is Shane Wright taking minutes from? Nobody. And he, 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 and then also some of those players you mentioned are not centermen. Right. We want him to be a centerman. So yeah. he's not coming in for Beniers. He's it, not coming in for Wenberg. He's it's the not same coming experiment. in for Gord. It's the same experiment in Los Angeles and, in a sense, in Anaheim with McTavish. Is You try to shoehorn certain players into certain positions, and it does not work when you mm. should be putting them in the natural position that they're more accustomed to. If you put them off wing, it'll just make them really uncomfortable in the National Hockey League level. And we've seen that so many times. For different players in the West Coast. And I'm harping on McTavish and Byfield a little bit. And even Zegras. Zegras mm. was on a wing recently until they finally decided, oh, yeah, sorry. Z should be a center. Duh. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. It's not a bad thing either way. It it just is what it is. It and is. so, um, you know. I think I think he'll be fine. I think everyone needs to slow their freaking roll. Yep. And yeah. just let it happen. I'm I'm gonna quote to what we just saw in the chat. Shane mm-hmm. Wright has an eighty percent shooting percentage in the AHL right now. First off, that's not sustainable at all. He's gonna come back down to earth to like sixty percent. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his line isn't generating a lot of shots. But I think what isn't really tracked in the AHL, but this is for me watching last night's game. They do generate some buzz, and they do generate good chances. Stuff that doesn't really get in the in the um, box score all that much. But I was impressed with Shane Wright against the goals last night. He did pass the eye test. He passed the eye test. He did. Uh, Two way. Ish. Exactly. Ish. I'm I, okay. No. Keep keeping it honest. Ish. <laughs> Ish. I yeah. think is generous, but okay. Yeah, in the in the AHL general level, ish. The defensive okay. game does need to improve, but I feel like that will come with coaching. I think that'll come with a little bit of time. Again, he's only 18 years old. Yep. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if he's still in Coachella Valley when they play their first home game. I want to say it's taking place in a couple of weeks. Cause I know I'm going to be there for the actual home opener. He can't be, he's on a conditional loan. Oh, that's right. So he can't be there for more than a few. So he's played three games. He's got five games, 14 days. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so a little kind of wrinkle that. in there. So his next games will be at Henderson, the second and the third. And yeah. then after that, we will see. A home opener, by the way, for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Sunday, December 18th, and then you have a game Mm -hmm. on Tuesday, December 20th. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to be there for both those games. Nice. So I'll definitely keep you posted on all that. Keep me posted. And let you know on how all that goes. But it's, it's interesting times in the Pacific right now, just to kind of like go back to that part of the conversation that we kind of started on. The Pacific Division is considered to be a weaker division. And for Dallas Eakins to have no success in this division is extremely telling. I mean, what was it going to take? Was it going to take a nine-game streak? No. 
How about an 11 game losing streak? No. How about a 12 game losing streak? No. How about a 19 game streak where they don't win a regulation game? Nope, not that either. It has been 22 games. The Anaheim Ducks have one, one regulation win in 22 games. Wow. And it was kind of a miraculous win, too. I mean, John Gibson saved that game for the Ducks. They shouldn't be... It should still be at zero. It should be a record right now, if not for Gibby. Wow. And if he misses time, it's going to be concerning times for yeah. the Ducks. Yeah, that was... Um, you know, it did not look like it was a great... It looked, uh, you know, he had a teammate fall on him, kind of contorted. We're seeing the replay right now. Still tried to make the save, which is impressive. It is. Whilst having a a teammate on his leg that was kind of bent awkwardly and contorted underneath his body. So um, that can be tough for a goaltender especially. Yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully have word on tomorrow. I mean, if Gibby is hurt and they have to recall Lukas Dostal, well, first off, the goals are screwed <laughs> if that happens. <laughs> They're way more than screwed. Dostal, I feel like, could be ready for the NHL as a backup, but it's going to go from bad to worst to worst to, my God, they're already dead. Stop it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yep. Tell us how you really feel. Um, Hoping for that number one pick, honestly, at this point. <laughs> wow you yeah. and a few other teams in the specific division yep <laughs> particularly uh, i'm thinking of a certain team that doesn't like to play defense and thinks it's for nerds who could that be i wonder oh my god <laughs> <laughs> listen that was a wild and crazy game but we got the win that's all that matters yep Once again, special thanks to Erica Ayala for joining on the podcast. Really appreciate having her on. That's going to do it for today's podcast. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, etc., etc. You could follow me on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. You could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. I'm hoping to have a full voice definitely by (coughs) I'm leaving this in definitely by Thursday so yeah just gonna try to survive the week once again thank you all so much for your continued support it is very greatly appreciated for Locked on Anaheim Ducks I'm Jason JD Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day please continue to be safe out there be kind to one another and Ducks fly together